Hello everybody, I'm Jay Appel, back with you again. This time we're going to show you how to do disaster recovery to a new machine, brand new name, brand new IP, and a different drive letter. Now in front of us, we have the different virtual machines we're gonna be using today. This is our current production machine called EPO. And as you can see here, it's been working pretty well, but in your case, we're going to show you what it's like when it's not available, and then you have to bring it back from the dead using the disaster recovery snapshot. For the purposes of our demonstration, I've powered it off and up on the very top, we have a number of machines. We'll have our domain controller called the PDC. We'll have our SQL server called SQL and the new EPO server appropriately named new EPO. There's our version 10 software, the latest that we have here from December 28th of 2018. And when we started up, I posed a couple of questions for you. When was your last snapshot? You want to look at your server tasks to make sure that they're scheduled and run daily if that's appropriate in your environment. What are your SQL credentials, EPO credentials? What is your passphrase? And of course, if you don't have a passphrase, head over to server settings and reset it under disaster recovery. Now over here, we're gonna select restore EPO from an existing database snapshot. We're going to change the drive letter to D. We're going to click on that button over there called change. Leave everything else and just change it to the letter D. There we go. Click OK. You'll notice we have a drive letter D. There's nothing there right now, but there will be shortly. Click on Next. We're checking for domain controllers, SQL servers. Sometimes you get a list. In my case, you don't get a list. And if you do, this is what it looks like. We're not gonna look for them again. So we're gonna click on No and manually enter the information. Now at the top, we have our database server. That's where our database is located called SQL and our database name. Now, if you're not sure what the database name is, you'll go over to your SQL server if you can or ask someone and they're going to bring up the SQL Server Management Studio. And when they do, a screen similar to this will appear. Click on Databases, the very first category up at the top, and there you'll see at least our databases. We do require you to put them on a dedicated SQL Server. I've had clients that don't do that. It's always good to have your own EPO SQL Server. And we're gonna take that name and transpose it over here to EPO underscore EPO SQL. Enter our SQL authentication. It's our SA account along with the appropriate password. So you can see the importance of having this information in advance or someone there that can come over there and type it in for you. Go ahead and click next. Now we're gonna look at the EPO pre-installation auditor. It's a program that runs now to check to make sure that everything appears to be in order. There are warnings that you might see and it's very important that you look these over. Now, in the case of our SQL Server browser server status, say that 10 times fast, you have to start that over on the EPO SQL Server. Okay, so over here on our SQL Server, we're gonna locate services locate the SQL Server browser and start it. If you don't correct it, then you're not gonna be able to continue with the installation. Now we're gonna rerun this test again to make sure that we've satisfied the requirements of it being fixed. And as we look at the various tests here, you'll see that now we've gone from two issues down to one issue. And there we have a check mark next to the SQL Server browser service. And the remaining item is because we don't have enough hardware for the purposes of our demonstration here. But I only have a couple of machines, so I'm not going to worry about it. 
and that particular case is not going to keep us from continuing. As we click next, we look at our ports. We want to make sure that the ports are exactly what they were prior to us doing this disaster recovery. Your ports might be different, so you want to make sure that you reflect this grid to have the right ports. When you do, go ahead and click next. Now this is the very last part before we get our installation going. You're going to have an admin-like account. I'm going to use admin, of course. Our password is McAfee in our lab. And the passphrase, you'll need to get that from documentation that you have, or you'll have to create a brand new one and then a brand new snapshot and then go through this process once again. In our case, we already know what the passphrase is, so I'm going to paste them both in and click on Next. Now we're going to click on Install, and through Movie Magic, we're going to do a little splicing here so you don't have to wait through the entire process. And you'll see that a number of things are occurring now. We're going to actually uh, bring all of the new files as it makes sense from the new software. We're going to create new folder structures, and then we will ultimately start to bring information in from our snapshot into our new environment. Now over here under the EPO directory database software, you'll notice we have a current folder and an evaluation folder. You might be sewing this together. Hey, that looks like a branch. Well, you're right. The only thing that's not here is our previous branch or previous folder. So therefore, we now know that we have a current and evaluation branch or folder already created. And of course, you can click on in there. In our evaluation branch, we have policy auditor. And in the current branch, we have the rest of our software. Now on my EPO server install, I'm looking at the EPO server extensions install directory. You'll notice I have 17. It's going to grow to a larger number. These are of course going to be all the extensions that my server installation is going to need. Your server installation will vary as to the files it will have installed. Now here's the server comp Catalina local host directory. There are some XML files in here that are by default going to change. Now when we use the default software, we're going to install it like we are currently. And you'll notice here that a lot of these products might be things that you have. And I'm going to click on the agent management as one XML file. And when we look at it, you'll notice that it has a C drive declaration. Well, did we put this on the D drive? Well, we certainly did, but initially it drops all the software that we have for extensions right here into the local host. This is our configuration directory. Now the 202 timestamp is going to change after a period of time to 204. So it took a couple of minutes in our example here. And when we go back into the agent management XML and all of the XMLs in this folder, most of them are going to reflect this change, has been updated for the D drive because that's where we place the software. Now the good news is we're just finishing up now as we start the new McAfee services. Remember there are three services. There's the event parser, the Tomcat, and the Apache service. And then we will look at the details and all of this information will help you get that good feeling that you actually had a good installation. Finishing up some configurations, registering some products, and shortly the wizard will present a success story. If everything is good and you don't have a rollback condition, ta-da! 
Now over here, here are the three services. There's the Apache, the Event Parser, and the Tomcat service. You wanna make sure that all of them are running. Very, very important. Sometimes the Apache service won't start if you're having problems. Go over to the details tab. You'll see I have two Apaches at the top and then the Tomcat. Make sure that all of them are running. Give it a minute or two and go ahead and log in. Okay, so here we are at the entrance door. We took and placed admin and the password in. And here we are in our new environment, checking out all of the names of our machines, our policies, our tasks. Go peruse, go look around and make sure that everything looks just as good as it did before you lost your EPO server. Now, the last thing we need to do is to do resolution between your clients and that EPO server. And you'll notice here we have our DNS manager over on the domain controller, and we're going to put in a C name per the instructions in our KB articles for the old EPO server to resolve to the new EPO server. There's our new EPO. Here is the new address of 250. And when we click OK, you'll notice something a little bit strange. We already have a record in there. That's our A record. So what we're going to do is we're going to cancel out of here since it won't work. And we're going to select the EPO and delete that record. Now the A record for the old EPO is gone. We're going to select a new C name put in our old EPO naming and click through here and look for our new EPO server that is on 192.168.1250 and let's click on that click OK all right it's done the deed is done now what we're going to do is we're going to head on over to our client now we're over at WRK1 and we're going to ping new EPO and you'll see that it is resolving just nicely on 250. We're going to do the same thing with EPO and notice that it's coming over to the 250 address as well. Here we are at the client to WRK1 and we're going to watch carefully that at 10.06.54 we have a package uploaded to EPO server successfully we're now connected to the new server. So far, so good. Last thing to take a peek at here would be our actual EPO server itself. Notice we can place up in the URL the old EPO server name knowing that because of that C name, it's actually going to resolve over onto the new EPO server. You can go to the URL and say new EPO or EPO. But down here, here's where we know the truth is. This is the new EPO server here as revealed through the menu on the new EPO. Let's make sure that all of our machines are here. You'll be examining the tasks, the policies. You will go through all of the very important parts of EPO to make sure that your New implementation from the disaster recovery snapshot was 100% successful. Also notice here at the client, it's talking to the new EPO server. Wow, we did a lot of work. Now on this particular machine, we had tasks that were already in place that are now continuing to take and uh, be applied to these different machines. You'll also notice over here, we have the timestamps of at least three of our machines, if not more. And that, my friends, takes us and brings us to the end of our disaster recovery snapshot. A little bit more detailed than normal. You successfully brought yourself from a disaster recovery snapshot over into a brand new machine, new IP address, new name, and new directory name. I'm Jay Appel. I'll see you in the classroom.